there's a fish right there. Oh, it's a big one, guys. That is a big one. That's a big fat green bean bag, guys. Holy crap. Holy crap, it's a giant. What's up, guys? It's Dan at 302 Fishing. We're gonna get out here and we're gonna try to get a big old fat green bean bag on the end of the line today. Today is gonna be one of the last few weekends we're gonna be able to get out and use moving baits. As you notice, I'm wearing a hoodie. It is getting chillier. It's not even gonna be 50 degrees today. Uh, and the temperatures in the evening are being in the 30s now. So as these days go by further and further past the Thanksgiving holiday, these fish are gonna start getting slower and slower. We're gonna to have to change our whole tactics up. So I'm hoping with this weekend right here, we're gonna have luck on a moving bait that we've never used before ever on this channel. Now, I've never used it. None of my YouTubers that are here in Delaware have ever used it that I don't think I've seen uh, on any of their episodes. But if you're a Delawarean and you've used this one uh, bait here, I'd be curious to know uh, how you applied this particular bait. But we're gonna use it one way, because obviously I don't have a boat right now, so we're bank fishing this particular bait, but it can be used uh, in that fashion. So what are we gonna use today, guys? I pulled this out, it looks so sexy, guys. This is the Damiki Blade Bait. This thing looks awesome, man. Look at this thing, it's called Flash Gill. It literally looks like the bluegills that are in the pond that we're gonna go to right now. We are in the pond of giants. But this bait right here is quite unique right now. Uh, most of the times you just tie on your lipless crankbaits, you put it right up on the, uh, the ring that's on there and you start tossing around. However, this one you can make slight modifications to because it's designed into the bait. So the part that we're talking about right now is right here, guys. This piece right here, there's a little snap swivel that just popped up right there. You can see it. Let me try to get it up there for you there. That snap swivel, you can adjust that right there. So if you look at the bait right here, you can see three holes that are right here on top of the bait right now. And what those holes do is it allows you to variate how this bait is gonna vibrate in the water. There's the furthest location towards the back of the tail of the fish and the one towards the eye right now. We're gonna stick right in the middle, but the first one, which is the one that's closest to the nose right now, that one is in particular to be used when you're on your boat or ice fishing and you're sitting and you're jigging in a vertical position. You're just going up and down, up and down, letting that bait flutter and fall down, flutter and fall down. That's that application right there. The middle one that we're gonna be using right now, which is where it's at uh, on default, when you buy this bait right here, you can fish the flats with. You can bank fish, or if you've got school fish that requires a medium retrieve, that is the actual setting you put on uh, that uh, bait right there. The furthest one, if you wanna slow your retrieve and you wanna maximize the wobble on that bait right there, that is the setting you wanna put on there so you can create more vibration to irritate the living crap out of these fish. So let's go ahead and get this thing tied on here. Let's get onto the Pond of Giants. Let's see if we can go ahead and slay those big fat green bean bags on this tiny little blade bait. As we're walking our way over to the pond right here with our blade bait, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, guys. Click that notification bell. That way you're informed of all of our future episodes. Go ahead and give us a big fat thumbs up if you like the video. Drop a comment below. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram at 302fishing. But uh, leaves are starting to all fall off the trees right now. Water dead calm. <laughs> I think the sun is gonna help us out here because you can see how the colors are really getting set off uh, when the sun is out and everything else. So hopefully the sun will uh, give us that advantage that we need in order to put this fish on the end of the line. Uh, if you're curious about the weight of the bait, I didn't tell you that at the beginning, it's a half ounce. Boy, that thing is a thumping, I can feel it. Our fans are here. <laughs> but let's get that first cast out there and see if we get lucky on that first one. But it's got the bounce like a chatterbait. You can see the uh, rod tip going crazy. But let's see how long it takes these fish to gravitate towards this bait. One thing it does do, it casts pretty far. <laughs> and on this pond, it's kind of good, especially in so many spots you can't really get to, so you need the distance to get that bait down to where you need to get it to, especially on these shorelines. But boy, you know this fish are feeling that vibration in that water, man, come on. It's not too bad. I mean, I'd say maybe 
It's probably around just a upper 50s just a little bit, just about 50, 51, somewhere around there. That's what it feels like to me. It's a reasonable temperature for these fish. All right, man. Looks like it's going to be a leaf gatherer. <laughs> I wonder if they're gonna hit out in the deep or hit right off the shoreline here. We we're also working off a full moon that occurred about a day and a half ago. Some people believe it works to their advantage. Some people think it's hooey. <laughs> but I can see with my naked eye how wobbly that bait is. I'll, I'll see if I can try to bring it right up front of you again when I bring this retrieve in, man. You can see how violently th this thing wobbles. Well, we already noticed one issue here. So, obviously with that snap swivel, you're gonna have to be wary of the fact that when you're casting it out there, sometimes those trebles get caught up in that snap swivel. So, that's just something you're gonna have to work through. Can't get frustrated with that because that's just part of the nature of the bait there. But uh, look how uh, crazy the vibration is on this, or the, the action of that is. I'm sorry. Try to get this thing all straightened out here. There we go. But you can see with your naked eye right here. Let's see. Can you see it? Hopefully you can. That is some serious action on a bait, guys. Oop, I messed it up. Let's get it back out there again. Look at that crazy action on that bait. Something's gonna whack up on this, I know it. Gotta exude that confidence, man, and think it, that it's gonna happen. But whatever we do catch, it will be a first on this channel. On a blade bait, that is. But I'm always open to trying some type of a new bait that we've never used before. Because if it's productive, it's going in my box and we're gonna use it from time to time. I've noticed right now as we're out here, there's virtually no action from the, uh, the gizzard shad out here. It is midday, so that might explain that. Keep my tip up just a little high. And mainly, again, just trying to keep those leaves off the trebles and kind of keep it mid-column. I want to spend my day picking debris off. <laughs> you know what I mean? So far, no slaps on the bait here. Pretty cool. I just watched a kingfisher come down and just swoop up and get a little bait fish out of the water. See him flying around over there? Leaves. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> There's a fish right there, guys. Nah, we're stuck. Looks like we're going to lose our bait here. <laughs> Right in the middle of nowhere, guys. We're stuck. Let's see if we can get lucky. If we lose this bait, we do have another bait that I have. It's called the Johnson Thin Fisher. But we're gonna try to save this bait first before we do anything. Let's see if we get lucky here. Trying to be very ginger so I can get it out. Oh, we might have gotten lucky. Yes, we did. <laughs> there you go. Episode was saved. Let's check our line to make sure there's no chafing going on here. I'm so glad. And it feels like the line is okay. You gotta love it when you save a bait. But we'll kind of move right here in this open area. I knew these ripples were probably gonna screw these fish up a little bit. We got on. I thought I was getting attacked here. The stick guys. <laughs> I 
bring this retrieve in and we'll go down to our left hand side let the ripples calm down there's a fish right there oh it's a big one guys that is a big one that's a big fat green bean bag guys holy crap holy crap it's a giant it's a giant guys it's a giant oh my goodness gracious first fish guys first fish holy crap oh <laughs> There you go. Good three, four pounder maybe, guys. Wow. Good, wow, might be even heavier than that. <laughs> Big old giant on a blade bait, guys. Look at that. Little stout fellow. Let's get our pliers out, but uh, he swallowed that bait. He's got hooks on both sides of his mouth. But that was way out there. <laughs> All right, big fat green bean bag right off the bat. Still chasing it, guys. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get a quick weight on that one. Absolute pretty, pretty bass. His dorsal's all kind of screwed up, man. He must be a scrapper. Oh, he's starting to bite down on me. You see that? All right, we're zeroed out here, as you can see. Let's go ahead and get our clip on the fish and uh, see what we're starting our day off with here. Wow, almost, almost four and a half pounds. 4.36 pounds <laughs> on a tiny little blade bait. Absolutely amazing. The mamas are still out hunting. Let's get this one released. Send her on her way. What a beautiful fish. But we'll get her uh, all ready to go. But uh, she's been chomping down on my hand for a couple minutes. There she goes, she's gone. So with every big fish, always check your line, which I always tend to forget, but it seems right now there's no chafing on here. You know these big fish, they got that pallet on top of their mouth and it's gonna scrape along on that line and create those little abrasions. And again, you never know that big one you catch after that one could break that line. But that fish is well out in the middle of the pond right now. So that's letting me know they're coming off the bank and starting to go into deeper water that's warmer right now because all the debris that's falling down here, they're gonna go below into the warmer thermocline. On that fish right there, I did not feel a thump. I felt just a pull. It was just pulling on the line. So again, I just decided to go ahead and uh, get the uh, bait pinned up into his mouth. That's why you saw me pulling my rod to the right-hand side to keep it pinned because I don't wanna have any chance of that bait coming out there since those hooks are, are small. I don't wanna go ahead and, and slam it. That's why it's important for you to keep the pressure on the whole time when you're using these type of baits. Because all it takes is one flinch from that fish underneath the water, above the water, and then that's all she wrote, man. She's, she's gone. But that's a first, man. What a good way to start off an episode with a first time bait with a big fat green bean bag right in front of your face. That was so awesome. Again, let me try to show you the colors here. You can see how the sun is shining off of that uh, bait right there. And those colors are really, uh, again, predominant uh, as it's coming through the water. So again, they'll see that pattern of the bluegill right there and automatically just go right after it if they see it come across their face. Check out this cool bird flying around the sun here. Little turkey buzzard. Just flying, gliding around. Looks pretty cool, huh? No effort. Any little whisper of wind, man, keeps them up in the air. Loving the fact, even though it's chilly out here, that there's no wind. Because <laughs> it's torturous, man, when you're out here on a cold day and that wind's a blowing and it gets right through to the bone. But we just gotta watch out for a couple lay downs. So we're gonna get snagged up in that. Trying a little different approach here. We're gonna be doing a little bit of jigging right here. See if that vibration up and the flutter down. We'll elicit a strike since we've been throwing a whole bunch of casts after that big one. We haven't gotten a strike yet. But you kind of kind of varied up a little bit. Again, see what these fish are in the mood for.
There's a fish right there, guys. Fish on. All right, little dink. <laughs> I felt that little thump right there, but we got a second fish on for the day. Boom, that fish is cold as anything. I can feel its body temperature. Boom. <laughs> Let's get her on her way. And she's gone. He saw me doing the fluttering, it wasn't doing anything. And right when I went back to the continuous retrieve, fish was right on it. Oh. Let's hope we didn't lose the bait there because it is in the tree. Here we go. Yep. Oh, got lucky. <laughs> All right, we're going to stop that real quick, huh? A couple more casts and we'll get into our next opening. Well, what an absolute comfortable day. Perfect, perfect fall day. But you can see how quickly the seasons are changing. You can look right here, all the leaves are practically gone off of these trees. So it's only a matter, like I said, in a couple of weeks, man, it's gonna get dismal. It's gonna look like a barren wasteland around here. And those fish are gonna get deeper and deeper and quieter and quieter. But of course, you know we're gonna do our best to get those fish on the end of the line. Bay fish are picking up right now. I'm noticing uh, fish jumping all over the place. So it looks like we've made it past our noon to one time lull when it comes to bait activity. There's a fish right there, guys. Oh, he snapped off, guys. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. He took me. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, man. I was doing the flutter action, man, and that was a big one, too. I made sure I checked that line multiple times. I didn't feel any chafing, so it must have been probably right around the knot area because it didn't seem like it was a, uh, a fray or anything else like that. It was just like a clean break. Let's get the trash in my pocket we'll get that tied on and uh start casting back around here and see if we can get another uh, fish on the end of the line based on the pull that i had on there i would have to estimate that that was probably around maybe a three pound bass that i had on the end of the line again the setup that we have today that we're using with this bait right here i have my uh, shimano corrado dc 150hg we have our seven foot three uh veritas that we have medium heavy action and we got our trusty traditional 12 pound test berkeley trilene xl smooth again the only minor drawbacks as i mentioned to you is again it's a snaggy bait and again it does like to bind up on that snap swivel other than that i think it's a great bait so far the action is phenomenal Same weight too, half ounce. Oh, there's a fish right there, guys. I didn't even take two casts. Oh, he just came off. <laughs> wow, that was a vicious hit. But literally two casts in and we already had a reaction on that bait. There's a fish right there. Fish on. That's a good one, guys. It's a good one. Real good one. Oh, Lord. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at this one, guys. Back-to-back -back hits, guys. Back-to-back -back hits. Nice. <laughs> Two and a half, three pounds. Beautiful, beautiful. He tore that bait up. And he swallowed it too, man. Look where he's got that bait right down in the uh, stomach there. Or his mouth, I'm sorry. But, uh, boom. Crazy how a color changes things completely. Well, let's uh, get this one on the way. Because that fish is ready to go. Ready? 
she gone. All right, I enjoyed that episode, but before we get going, guys, I want to give a big shout out right here, right behind me. That's the Williamsville Bait and Tackle Shop. That's where I go to when I'm mid-state. Uh, you guys know that I always go to Smith's all the time. Those are my boys up there, but it's almost an hour away uh, to go to that bait shop. We're not driving an hour to go to a pond. It's literally 15 minutes away from this bait shop right here. But I would encourage you to come right here, help the local businesses all the time. This little bait shop right here, you would be absolutely amazed at the amount of baits that are in here and a huge selection of baits. So come down here in Williamsville, Delaware, visit these folks, very kind, courteous man, and they take care of you each and every time that you're here. But they were the stars today because this is where I got that bait at that you saw today. That was the Damiki flash gill that you saw today, that blade bait. That was the star, man. It caught a big fat green bean bag on the end of the line. So this is what you need to put in your box right here, right along with your lipless crankbaits, man. I, I thought it was a great bait, man. The color was perfect. And it didn't take long for that fish to gravitate onto the end of that line. However, the fishing did die off a little bit. And of course, I ended up losing that bait. That's why I had to come back here to get a new one so I could show it to you at the end. But I was prepared. I had another blade bait in my pocket. And we came out with the Johnson Fin Fisher. And again, immediately these fish jumped up on it because again, in that pond are nothing but gizzard shad. And that literally looks like tiny little gizzard shad. So we got a few more on the end of the line. But after that, man, I fished for another hour and a half and I couldn't get anything to get up on that line again. So hopefully you would have enjoyed that episode. If you did, guys, of course, give me a big fat thumbs up as many times as you can. Drop a comment below. I'd like to know what you hear or say about this episode and any kind of uh, experiences you have with this bait because we don't normally use this in the state of Delaware because it's not cold enough to ice fish. And of course, I don't have a boat. So we couldn't go with the jigging action, but I did almost have a strike on that similar type of action uh, later in the episode. If you haven't already done so, guys, hit that subscribe button. Click that notification bell. That way informed of all of our future episodes. Of course, on my right-hand side are some more excellent videos you can check out here and continue your journey on 302 Fishing. I'm going to get out of here, guys. Hopefully, you have your luck on your blade baits catching those big, fat green bean bags like I did today. And as always, fish on.